social sure. connect. Social I've met a lot of stressed out day traders. Oh, you know, yeah. there, that's yeah. oh okay. So I can't see myself, so I'll go for it. I was like one of the luckiest ones I know. And I just so everybody ready? Yeah. Okay. So everybody, my name is Rayhan. Thank you for you know coming out of the uh, uh, the networking part of it and learning part of it. Um, how about you introduce yourself a little bit? Oh Steven? well, I'm Stephen Schwartz. I'm in a process, drifting through life a little bit, looking for whatever my next fun thing might be, <coughs> meeting people, just seeing where life takes me. Awesome. Cool. Um, my name is Connor Flynn, and I go by Kano for short. I'm a high school entrepreneur, and I'm here for a program at MIT, where instead of just actually um, being an investor, so I'm exploring entrepreneurship a bit. And uh, I really love mechanical engineering, and um, want to pursue an MBA and delve into any type of engineering in the future. Cool. So, uh, <laughs> um, I'm Sean. I am a I'm currently in the process of transitioning careers from marketing communications to product management. So just trying, I came here today with the intention of networking and starting to kind of build my contacts so I can eventually create the word of your people. And I also run a podcast about nerd culture. Which culture? Uh, nerd culture. <laughs> nerd culture. So Star Wars, video games, anime. <laughs> cool. Um, right now it's nerd cross culture. Nice. You're about to get a lot more followers. There you go. Yeah. My name is Dan. Uh, I work at a Boston public high school, and on the side I have a social giving circle. What do, What does the social giving circle do? It's just a small giving circle of friends from college. We bring about a thousand dollars in every month, and then we figure out a fun thing to do with it. Cool. Yeah. Sir. Very focused. I just find, I just checked. I have thirty one followers on Twitter. <laughs> That is really pathetic. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm in the architecture, building architecture business. Nice. <coughs> I'm Marsha. I'm new in town. I just moved to Boston and I worked in higher ed for six years and alumni engagement and I'm trying to see where the wind takes me now. I'm Romain. Uh, I'm working on a passion aspiration platform called Cadet. I'm trying to figure out how to increase the number of people trying to What does Cadet do? So it's a service that helps people go through small hands-on projects and STEM creative arts and other kind of science fields over the course of a year, year and a half, and then uh, guys into that process. Cool, sir. I'm Gilbert. I work with a company called Tunnel that does a it's a messaging platform for businesses, and basically it allows uh, communicating in the extended supply chain. Where are you from? I'm from Boston. 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 Hi, James. Awesome. So I'm from right here in Boston. Um, so my name is Jing, and um, I'm always in between working a full-time job or running my own startups or events. Um, and I see that here you um, you did 51 different ventures by the time you were 36. That's awesome. I've had probably 51 some odd jobs <laughs> so far, and um, but um, but yeah, the, the passion of um, running a startup is always within me. So. Another one um, in, in the travel industry. Cool. Sir? Yeah, so Seamus McGovern. Um, I guess I'll describe myself as a, an engineer first, entrepreneur. Um, I have a software company that does everything from financial apps, uh, quant finance, and um, one of my main folks these days, I run a conference called the Open Data Science Conference. We do a um, bunch of events around the world, and in three weeks we'll have one. I'm Galore India, cool. which I'll be going to my first time in India. I'm really excited. Nice. <laughs> Do you guys want to introduce yourself? or? Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, my name is Yolanda. I'm from Brazil. I have come to back to Boston to work through my network here in Boston College. Right now I'm working at a startup called Food for All. So we are basically a marketplace where we sell leftovers like, from restaurants. So we have this ba big problem of food waste. So that's the way we are tackling it. Uh, we are going to sell like uh, less hour deals, so then <coughs> people get good food, great quality. It's a great uh, idea. Yeah, it's, 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 and I'm passionate about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I want the one. My name is Juan. I also work with Gilbert. Oh. Uh, so we do messaging for the extended supply chain. Uh, looking to get a lot of leads. <laughs> so very excited for you. Okay. Uh, again, thank you for being here. Um, I was given <coughs> this opportunity to share my experience of um, who I am, what I did, why I did, and what's the end game. So that's kind of uh, what I'm going to share with you. Once I share, hello Prince, uh, you were uh, more than ha I'll be happy to you know take questions and explain to you. And my my passion is to help you get to where you want to go, right? So. Whatever you want to, whatever uh, you want to do, we'll see how we can leverage social media networks to take advantage of it and then go wherever we want to go. So um, I am from Pakistan. I live there. Um, a few years ago, when I was almost 35, 36, one of my teacher my mentor asked me, what if God asked you what you want, what would you want to do? because I had almost everything, I said, well, I would like to end world poverty. And uh, at that time, I was a very different person. I was very, you know, more closed person, more, more regular, not 800,000 followers, not in a public space, just keeping and doing what I was trying, what, whatever I wanted to do. So um, how do you end poverty from the planet? That's like a crazy goal. Uh, and that was also before Bill Gates said it, before other guys I heard saying them that this is possible. Um, so we were all asked to write it on a board um, that, you know, write it on a board. If it's your goal, you should, you know, look at it every day so you can actually try to achieve it. So I looked at it every day and anything about it. What can I do? Coming from a technology background, um, I thought, well, let's start by creating a million entrepreneurs to start off with because million in the internet world doesn't seem like a big number you know you have at that time there were 100 million facebook users 100 million google users well let's try to make at least a million users somehow i don't know how but let's try to do that so the goal became let's start a million businesses help people a million people start their own businesses i started talking about it first i was very shy to talk about it because it's a very really crazy goal again uh, I started talking about it. Once I started talking about it, I got feedback and one of the mentors, you could say, said, well, instead of helping, instead of starting a million businesses, why don't you think of hundred small businesses that can be started 10,000 times? Uh, that makes it a million businesses. So we said, oh, that's an easier way to do it. So we started looking for businesses that can be started in hundred dollars and can be scaled 10,000 times. Now, $100 doesn't seem much in this country, but where I come from, $100, it does, is it, it is possible to start a business at $100. So we started creating 120 different new ventures online. We set it up 120 websites. We started, uh, we hired people who could first go out, meet 500 people who do that business already, find the best practices and learn how to, um, uh, what are the best practices and create small like, little subway, small little McDonald's, small little everything which you can think of, but in scale. How do you scale that? So we started doing that and then the point came, how do you market all this? How do you, how do you brand it? So we did different branding techniques and I've been following Richard Branson for a long time and I saw that everything he starts, starts with a virgin. You know, everything he has, he puts virgin brand on it and he was the biggest <coughs> brand ambassador of virgin himself so my team asked me you need to be, go go out there and you know brand yourself so that people who know you and don't know you come and uh, we take advantage of your branding so that whenever the product comes um, we can kind of use your name and brand to market it prince uh, can you ask them maybe they can turn on the AC. air conditioning yeah. in here maybe there's some model outside um, so we started doing that and at that time I had maybe like 5,000 friends or something like that. I've, I've always been connecting people since I was a little kid. Uh, I threw at parties at home. Um, I, I started computer business when I was really small. Uh, so when I was 15, 16, we had lunch parties at my home where computer vendors would come and have lunch. And those people who were not talking to each other were still there. 
And I saw that a year later they were actually doing business together with them just because, you know, somehow they were meeting each other. So um, I was still connecting them. I was still, you know, kind of getting them in the same room. When email, that, that's before internet, that's before email. That's, uh, so I started doing that. Then when email came, I started <laughs> introducing people. Hey, you should use email. I started one of the first email company in Pakistan, internet company in Pakistan. So I started introducing people. Hey, you should know each other because this is, you know, you can collaborate together. It's kind of like a venture cafe, what they do. Uh, create space where people can come and meet each other. So I was still doing that and on Facebook, a lot of people, um, I started building, I started talking, I created, started teaching everything I knew. Like I never went to college or high, I mean, college or university, so I started teaching the techniques which I learned by doing a lot of different things, small little techniques on how we can start your own business. And that's how it started, you know, a, a lot of videos on Facebook, a lot of videos on YouTube, um, all that started happening and I started branding myself instead of branding so a, as a tech company I had many companies one was called Pakistan computers the other ones called you know brain internet services then there was uh, fax away net to phone uh, a lot of other brands so I thought the shelf life of a tech company is no longer than three years you know it goes away but you know if you brand Branson he's 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 there till he dies he is there, there if you brand Jesus he's still here <laughs> so um, how about that's why we chose to brand us brand me and we started you know branding branding branding, marketing um, as when I was selling my tech services I was one of the uh, best marketeers because I was using crazy ways of marketing which wouldn't cost a lot of money but we would still go out and put a lot of banners, billboards, whatever we can. We were marketing the hell out of our products. And everybody knew them, even though we were very tiny. So all the branding techniques which I learned went into finally branding Rehan so that we can have a large audience. So now we have Rehan Cafe or Rehan Burgers or Rehan Fries. All of a sudden, Rehan goes out and talks about it. We get thousands of followers instantly on the product because Rehan now has you know two, three hundred thousand followers, and all of a sudden that product gets brand. Otherwise, you'll have to brand each of the product, and the cost of branding each of them would be higher. So, we started using my own brand in other products. In the meantime, I started a school. Um, um, it was the school was targeted of Pakistan and 65% of the country of India which is 650 million people cannot read their name in any language right so that's the scale of uh, issues with technology the at that time no smartphones there were stupid phones the $10 <laughs> stupid phones available so we thought why not take these celebrities that you know everybody knows uh, in that part of the world, Amitabh Bachchan or Katrina Kaif or you know Tom Cruise's of that part of the world, why don't we ask them to teach? So we started creating a school, which was the goal of was to empower um, those 140 million Pakistani, 650 million Indians who cannot read or write anything. So I full fledged went for two years marketing that product, which is free content for anyone to watch, and if they watch it, they would learn basic literacy for free. Again, that gave me uh, a lot of leverage. The people started following me more and more. You know, what is this guy doing? How can he do it on his own? The, you know, the whole government can't do it. How can one guy do this, right? So uh, that kind of gave me more and more following and more and more following. And initially, when I started using my brand, my own name, I, I got a lot of heat. You know, why is he using your own name? Why, you know, he's trying to self-portray, he's trying to brand, you know, become famous he's trying to get money out of people you know when 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 you get you get a lot of heat uh, from when you do try to do something very different in a culture wherever, wherever that it be it here be it overseas anything different is always criticized so the f the biggest challenge was how do I deal with my own self how do I how do I look in the mirror saying that I'm not really doing it for my own ego or for myself 
and that's where you will whenever when after this I'll ask you questions what if you had a million followers how would you become how would you feel what is it that you can deal with yourself because that's the biggest obstacle I found once I said I want to empower Deed again I couldn't say it from my mouth it was like I was shaking to say it because it's such a big commitment to make uh, and then same thing with when I would I would say you know my school was called Rehan school that's my name so again I would be sh very shy to say it because you know I was kind of like how can I brand myself how is it why does it have my name why doesn't have my father's name or my uncle's name or you know country's name or something and a lot of I got a lot of heat in the first four or five years and uh, after that it just people forgot about it people you know people within themselves um, started to say Toyota, Suzuki, all these are family names, all these were human beings, Sony, all these were people's name and eventually they became a brand. So they, they stopped criticizing, I had to go through that criticism process and um, now I don't give a you know rat's ass for what they say uh, and now it's, it's just growing on its own. How did we do it? Uh, we used a lot of Facebook advertising initially. Um, I got, I, I, st I, I don't know why I was advertising in the start, but I found that for a penny you could get advertised in African countries and certain countries because in the US it was still a dollar a like to advertise yourself. So I started advertising myself in African countries in Albania, Macedonia, Lithuania, these countries which nobody even knew about, it was just a penny, ad, penny ads, you could say. So I ended up having friends from all over the planet. So my Facebook became very multicultural. It was weird, I, ended, I, I went to co Cambodia, I went to, into a two and a half star hotel, checked in and said, <gasps> the guy was like, you're my Facebook friend. And I was like, what? <laughs> Because that was the weirdest thing which has ever happened to me because, you know, in Cambodia, I wasn't expecting that at all. I've had that in London, I've had that in other places from my own community, but a Cambodian recognizing me was very weird. Uh, kind of liked it, but still, was still weird. So, why did I do it? Because we wanted to save money in branding our products. So, I wanted to brand a person so that we can then just say, Jesus said that, or Jesus said that, or Rehan's product is this, or Rehan's product is that, kind of similar, not that I'm Jesus. <laughs> uh, so kind of like that. Then, um, so um, if you go in detail in my history, I started a business in the U.S. in 1999. I, was, I started coming back and forth. In 2003, after 9-11, I went back, and I was not allowed back in the U.S. for 11 years. I applied many, many times. I was rejected 16 times to come to the U.S. I, I couldn't even know why I was banned or blocked or denied visa. So some of my customers started saying, you know, you're fake. You, are, you have did something wrong. You must have done something wrong. Was the U.S. State Department is not stupid. They, why didn't, aren't they granting you visa? I don't know. Um, but I started making videos and that's when actually if we go back we I started talking to my customers directly through video so that they can actually know I exist I am there I'm real there was no Facebook live so it could still have been fake uh, but like the moon landing but still <laughs> I was I was still um, making videos to talk to them so I actually had to invent myself from a very shy person who couldn't talk in front of people to a person who's making videos and then now I make videos all day long and that's all I do <laughs> <coughs> so uh, eventually um, um, I became a resident of Dubai and in Dubai every time there's a uh, there is an immigration card they give you don't have to go through immigration like over here if you go in you stand in a line for an for a day I mean like not a day for like a few hours so in Dubai uh, they have this digital uh, immigration card you just put it in and then you can just pass uh, and just uh, they do, do an iris scan they do a finger scan and you just go it's like five seconds so what I got that but every time I would go they would stop me they'll say hey come on here I want to see you uh, I'm not that handsome <laughs> Wh you know uh, why do you want to see me it turned out that my my name on my card uh, the same name guy did something wrong in Dubai and he was blacklisted I was like, maybe that's the reason I'm not getting American visa. Oh. So I just said to him, can I add my family name to my passport? Would that help? said, 
I don't know, try it. So I actually went and added my family name and since then I was never stopped. And then I applied for the US visa, I got a visa. Oh. Weird, right? Um, so some guy who had a similar name uh, did something and I was accused of it. So I, I came in, um, I was abusing Facebook as much as I can while I was not allowed in the US. So I made everyone who was anyone in this country my Facebook friend. So Steve Wozniak who invented Apple was my Facebook friend. Steve Case who invented AOL was my Facebook friend. Anybody you can think of who, who did something great or had a TED talk, he was my Facebook friend. Uh, because it was early times, nobody was de denying you. It's like LinkedIn, everybody says yes. But on Facebook, at early time, everybody just said yes. So I became friends with them. And my mission when I was in the US, I was actually, the first city I came was in Boston. We had a, we, our company won an award for the best performing Asian company. So we were actually invited at Harvard um, as all the winners did. And um, um, after that, my mission was to go to every of my friend who would host me or buy me dinner or something. And I just went to them. So I went around and, and they will all ask my story. So I became lazy. Uh, I wanted to give out a card which actually told my story. So the terminology came from the West Coast. You know, everybody says there, so what's your story? So I was like, okay, here's my story. So there you go. Just there's three dead. So, and then I, as a marketeer, I understood that you have to have a end game or a call to action or something. So this is like the fifth version of the card where I wrote, you know, I, I had like 600,000 followers at that time. I, I wrote that uh, I want a million followers so that people would just, you know, do something, you know, add me on there. Uh, and then by that time, I already started an organization called the Institute of Peace. And I was, again, introducing people on Facebook between Israel and Palestine, India and Pakistan, trying to make them fight each other on Facebook rather than with guns uh, so that they could, you know, talk it out. Just like you go into therapy, I was doing therapy on Facebook. I still do that if you if you join me on Facebook to see what I do. So um, that's kind of the end game of a million followers. Why I want million people because I found over the years that um, you know people talk about each other but they don't talk to each other. You know people would always talk about third party but they wouldn't go out and talk to them. You know it could be Jews, Muslims. Hebrews, whoever, whatever, you know, na black people, African American, whatever they want to call it, we always um, kind of, uh, while I was doing a tour in the US, I went to, you know, southern parts of the US, to very, very strong white areas where I was like scared to go into a church even. I was like, oh my God, this is like my end day. But I was still able to make it out of there. And I found that they were really great people once you get to know them, right? So you have to have a conversation. So my whole life has now been about conversation. That's where this book came out. People didn't know how to behave on Facebook. People did not know how to actually have a conversation. Um, I did not know how to behave on Facebook. I, I was blocked by a lot of people. I was accused like, oh, you're hitting on me. I was like, no, I'm just saying, hello, I'm just trying to be a Facebook friend. I don't even live in your country. <laughs> so. Um, I had to learn through all that and that's my experience shared in here. Um, I also started a project four years ago where I started giving free laptops to people who would steal my Facebook friends. Why? Because I th I, when I was living overseas I, and I was working in this country while I was living overseas. So my, 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 my fellows, my people who were co-working with me, uh, they had to understand this country's mentality, the mindset. So I was encouraging them to add friends from this country so that they can actually talk to you, talk to under, you know, understand the mentality of what, how is it being a local person? What does T means? It's not a gal, uh, it's, it's, it's the train, it's not just the capital, it's just not the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, it's, it's not an alphabet. So, and you wouldn't understand that unless you have been to some place. But now getting a visa to them to come in and s spend some time here is like a, um, I spent $150,000 inquiring why I didn't get a visa. So that's the kind of a mammoth effort to, to come here sometimes for people who had never been here. Um, so I announced a project where I thought, well, how can we change people's mindset? So I said, if anybody would steal my 500 non-Pakistani Facebook friends, I'll give you a free laptop. So far, I've given 350 laptops. 
and it has changed I have the data of you know what happened to those people and how their concept changed and how they started thinking in a different way um, so that's kind of a summary of uh, what I do what how can it help you so now you have to think if you had a million followers on Facebook how can it help you how it helps me is wherever I go I have fan following there, I have people who are ready to meet me, I have ready to pick me up from airport, I have read people to do whatever they want. I want, I can just ask uh, and it gets done. Uh, my biggest, my newest social experiment is I'm building a new city outside my own city called uh, Karachi. It's a small city of 22 million people. So uh, this is a new city I'm building and it's all going to be sold over Facebook. It's all going to be like, it's, it's an IT city design based out of my learning of the world, you know, like, like a Google Plex or, a, or an Apple space. Uh, the best of the world in one space where people can come in and actually do crazy things. Uh, like a Silicon Valley where you can actually go and be stupid um, and nobody is there to judge you. So that's, and the land came out of all of a sudden to me uh, all everything has been done through Facebook I haven't really is invest money spent any money whatsoever on, des on, on on designing the design on buying the land on everything just came to me through Facebook um, so that's kind of what I do and um, like this concept of the city came in I was in Barcelona for a conference I actually went into a wrong conference. I was sitting in a press room, very, I had a migraine like today. I was hiding from everyone. A friend of mine just walked in he's from Australia. I was like, dude, what are you doing here? He's like, dude, what are you doing here? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, yeah, I have a migraine. I'm just hiding from everyone. And we started talking. And while we were talking, another fellow is walking towards me. And this guy says, do you know this guy who's coming? He said, no. Uh, well, he just did an IPO for $100 million in Italy. He's an Italian guy who he has built a new city in Italy for entrepreneurs. I was like, I'm, I want to do something like that. So, and he comes, hi, Rehan, how are you? I keep watching you on Facebook. Uh, you know, okay, oh, fine. He was my Facebook friend. I have never talked to him. His name is Marcio. And he told me about that you're doing interesting work for your people. I'm doing this city. Why would you like to come and see it? I said, well... Sure. So I flew the next week to Venice, saw his city, it was beautiful, and that's where I got the inspiration for, and I just, you know, again, through Facebook. I had no idea who that was till that guy walked in. And everything is just like been happening uh, very interestingly. So it's, it's, it is an old saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know, right? So, you know, this is, this is a great way for you to take advantage of um, how do you build a network that's that's the question which is the million dollar question here I had to invest a lot of money I set a billboard I actually set a billboard for Zuckerberg in Pakistan I set a billboard for Rob, uh, Richard Branson for myself I got I put up a billboard in the main city uh, costed me not too much a few thousand dollars but then I got that news there's an old saying news makes news makes news so I put up a billboard that I want to have 100,000 followers, a million followers, would you like to be my Facebook friend? Same thing. And it became new. So I became, um, uh, it, it was all over the world. It was in Turkey, India. I got started friend requesting from everyone because I had a billboard saying I want friends. <laughs> so, so you have to do crazy stuff. Like again, Richard Branson you know, did crazy stuff, jumped from buildings, uh, went on a balloon trip. You just have to make news out of what you're doing. And nothing is big, nothing is small. Uh, everybody has a story. Start telling it and teach what you know on YouTube, Facebook. People will start following you, but you have to put content out there. So if you're doing a nerdy broadcast, <laughs> I'll be happy to you know, share it, uh, talk about it. Um, I was telling you earlier about my free laptop program. So it has really helped me build a very interesting community. So if anybody wants time from me, I, they have to go out and hunt for 500 Facebook friends of mine before I even talk to them. Because um, a couple of years ago, before I started the program, a guy walked up to me, he was really nerdy. I'm sorry for you know uh, saying that, but he was really nerdy looking work. If you do it, I'll give you my, my hour. He said, sure, sir, what, what do you want? 
I said, go out and make 500 of my Facebook friend your friend. And I will uh, give you an hour. He said, that's it? He said, yes. I said, okay. Um, a few months later, I saw a video of a girl from Bulgaria doing a video about this boy from Pakistan doing a charity or something. I, I, have, I watched the video and I heard, I heard some name and I saw the link and I clicked, this is this boy that who actually wanted time from me. So he was like, uh, I messaged him, dude, you wanted 500 friends, you have 490, do you want to come and see me? He said, no, I don't need to see you anymore. All your friends took care of all my problems. Uh, because basically what we are doing is we're not sharing our problem with enough people yeah. and that's why uh, we, we get stuck in different places once we start sharing our problem become intimate and open things started to change so that's why I you know I find Facebook a fascinating platform for creating a global economy creating a global mindset creating we all live in our own bubble we, no matter how big of a bubble we live in we still is it still is a bubble um, it could be you're from Mass, it could be from New York, it could be, you know, once you start traveling, once you start seeing the world from the other person's eye, I think every um, did it for a lot of people over, over, over the years and I've the, I, I got the data because earlier I was just hunching, I was just my intuition, now I have been able to do it. So I strongly recommend you guys to, you know, start creating content give and all of a sudden you will start receiving back the universe helps you back uh, step number one b update your Facebook that's the step number one if nobody knows who you are why would they friend you why would they look up well, look you up so just like if, if I want to like um, um, uh, what is the word I'm looking for if I want to kind of sneak in on you or know more about you I can google you right in 10 minutes I'll know the same stuff which you're not well, you're hiding from your Facebook so if there's a LinkedIn profile you already have is all their information <coughs> put it on Facebook so that people can see your family can see what you do your friends can see what you do um, and that's step one that it shows that clearly in the book second post some personal photos like you know face photo or with 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 some people so that people can think you're a real person uh, sometimes people you know uh, just just po post photo which it doesn't or like there's a butterfly or a or a, or a vase or or a New York City fly you know flag or a US flag no that's not a good idea uh, post a photo um, and multiple photos would be great post a video introduction hi my name is XYZ I, this is what I do just like you introduce yourself uh, just post, post that and that will give them a feeling that I you know I can trust this person I can add this person I can follow this person then everybody has something to offer to teach everybody we are life experience i was just on the way over to the uber driver i was suggesting him you know post content every you know you're taking uh, uh rides with different people every day you have amazing 10 or 20 different experiences go home make two videos a day about this was a ride i had this was amazing this is what i learned today and people will watch it people are bored of the weird <laughs> content we're 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 producing people will watch that content and you're producing once you start producing content uh, look at humans of new york guy you know he started producing just photos people want content different content and we are all unique this is the first time in the known history of humankind our uniqueness can be portrayed to everyone we don't have to hide anything um, I, I, I believe that in the next 10 years it will be impossible to lie it will be we will have to be so transparent there will be so many cameras on us all the time it will be impossible to lie start practicing <laughs> just don't lie you know start putting content out there and and uh, eventually you can really make a difference and make phenomenal goals if you don't have a big goal make a big goal because now the world is you know I, I said five years ago in an introduction of I was teaching about Facebook that to me Facebook is like a global brain if I if I put a problem in here there's like 10 people who can solve it but when I post it on Facebook 800,000 people come in and start helping me uh, not all of them come but some of them come and start helping me with the goal same way I was just watching I was watch, just hearing a video yesterday from this guru uh, what's his name? Um, 
I don't know what's the name right now, from, from Los Angeles, an Indian guy with weird glasses like mine. What's his name? Yeah, Chopra. Deepak Chopra. Yeah. And his video came that, you know, Facebook is a, like a global brain. We have these neuron connections. So we, all these connections are, I think you, are th you just came in through my connection. He just, I met him through in Dubai. So people just, we just meet, right? And these connections, and th there's this amazing writer who wrote a long time ago, we never meet anyone uh, without a purpose. There's always a purpose. We just don't know what purpose that is till they serve. So keep those connections now. things in your life what your podcast is going to be about you know what Prince has to offer everybody here has something amazing to offer and believe it or not we when I started I thought you know I'm just wasting my time and when but when you hear a story back saying that you know it, it impacted my life it makes it worth it I think and uh, why am I here today last week I was told by a Facebook friend you should go here and then I came in and I met a guy and he said, go, can I, you know, do a talk about my book over here? And uh, uh, Andrew said uh, that, no, you cannot, we, we don't do that anymore, but you can give a workshop. So, uh, so he said no three times and I didn't take a no and I, you know, today I'm here, uh, able to do it again through, again, my social network friend uh, network. Again, take advantage, grow your network as much as you can initially. And you were supposed to be here earlier, so I can convince you to be on Facebook, <laughs> but uh, and be your first I follower. Some yeah, but my <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's kind of my story. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Yes, sir. Okay, so a lot of times people use Facebook as kind of a political platform. Uh, so there's controversial things going on in the world and uh, people sort of ventilate there. So I always thought that if I even had a hint of that, it would be contrary to my business purpose. And so the, sort of for me, Facebook was always just friends and family, you know, people that sort of, it's, it's, it really is tiny, you know, I, I guess. Um, I mean it's a few hundred people, but it's not thousands. And I didn't think it would be a great thing to open that up. You know, when you go to apply for work, sometimes they look at your whole public thing. And if you're like for a Democrat, then you're not a Republican. If you're for a Republican, then you're not a Democrat. And whoever's reading it feels really, really strongly about it. And so you sort of, you almost couldn't say anything. And that, that was sort of worrisome to me. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of us silo our social media. LinkedIn for business, maybe Twitter for business, Facebook for more social fun, shit posting mm. things. And so it's, it's kind of fascinating it's to a me different that you sort method of method that you've used, that you've done. Yeah, I mean you've come at it from a completely different mindset. You know, and it may be a cultural thing too. You know, so no, and nobody in my whole country does it. <laughs> um, I'll tell you why I used Facebook over Twitter over LinkedIn, right? So Facebook went out two years ago and created uh, a free version of Facebook, which does not require data in 85 countries. So you go out, buy a phone for 20 bucks, a used phone, get a free SIM card, put it in your phone, and you're using Facebook for free. Twitter doesn't do, do that, LinkedIn doesn't do that, nobody else does it. Now, remember oh going- yeah, Facebook, that's right. You get like free internet free access. Free internet access with Facebook for free, through Facebook, somehow. right? Yeah. right? Okay. It's called Facebook Zero. And if, if you go back to my mission of ending poverty and you need to go out to poor people and poor people don't have a lot of money, 
and unless you change their mindset they're going to stay poor you know it's it's poverty to me is nothing just the mindset you you change the mindset you've seen a lot of stories of people who went broke went again you know billionaires again broke again billionaires because there were they had this mind that I can do it so that's why I use Facebook as my platform not Twitter uh, not YouTube nothing else because Facebook to me was totally free and you know everybody had access to it I have people in my network I met people who have never been to school in their life but they use Facebook. One of my employees who came to work as a T-boy as a as a as a worker, he made a friend in Philippines. He had never been to school and he, she was teaching him English every day half an hour. And he started writing on Facebook, he I mean on everything. He he gave us we had a party with him last week. He departed to be an entrepreneur after 3 years working with us. Um so these people to me it's like a school it's like a meeting place it's like you it's like a virtual mentorship platform i have another friend i met last year her name is carla reachman she lives in uh, uh washington she was a school teacher she's 65 she wasn't doing anything uh, as something similar i asked her can you teach people to english she said, what, what is that i don't i'm not an english teacher i said you don't have to be an english teacher you have to just speak english you 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 speak english anyway so She has been teaching coming on my Facebook page live for the last one year every single day and she has been teaching anywhere from 2000 to 20000 people every single day what does she do she just hang out with people and and she's no longer lonely or she's you know she started walking yesterday because last time I met her she needed a walker and I said well if you can do this you can do this so she she had inspiration she has so much love on her facebook from everywhere i wish everybody who was elderly younger school children could give time to connect with afghanistani people you know indian everyone um i had another woman friend from the middle of nowhere in ohio she was like that you know personalized 85 facebook friends she somehow watched a documentary video about me and she shared it and tagged me you know bill gates of pakistan and i was like oh oh my bill gates whoa <laughs> so i messaged her thank you for the compliment and she's like whoa it's it's really you and we start talking and i i said can i connect you to more people she said sure and two weeks later i said can i connect you to more people she said sure now she has 8500 followers 5000 friends is she has uh, helped two students get a scholarship <coughs> she has been uh, now she started a cooking show on facebook and she's doing she's no longer lonely she one of the people messaged the the, the her saying i want to come to the us and uh, kill everyone you know this is the kind of messages which are most of people are afraid of and she you know calmed herself down and she replied after a few hours and started talking to this boy and uh it turned out it was a 16 or 17 year old afghanistani boy who had never talked to anybody from america before and she said that he said after a few hours of talking that ma'am you're the first person i've ever talked with who's an american some of my family has been killed by the us army so i hate america but if even in america everybody's as loving as you are i don't want to hurt anybody i apologize so that's the kind of things which can happen again through communication To me, Facebook is a platform. You can do it for political purpose, non-political purpose. Like the gentleman, I, again, the Uber driver I was walking, coming in today with, I was telling him, "Look, I wish, in, you know, I, I was asking, would Trump be winning the next election?" He said, "I hope not." So, <laughs> and he was like, "I said, well, how do you hope that? How do? What are the statistics?" So, <laughs> I said, "The only way that can happen is if you actually started to talk to Republicans." if you actually started right now what happens the moment you see a rep- the trump post you're like i don't want you in my friend list get out so the conversation is not happening and when if the conversation doesn't happen you don't learn anything uh and your uh, uh, the answer to your that you want to keep it in your bubble it is fine there's nothing wrong with it but as i was saying earlier we're entering into a a world which will be totally transparent no matter how much you hide it will you know tomorrow facebook can change its policy say everything you have ever posted on friend list you can either close your facebook account or we are making it public to everyone it's a company you can do anything they want um so that can also happen but as i said i think we should be careful of how to phrase what we are saying you can disagree with someone in a way where yeah. it doesn't offend with anyone so it becomes makes us a better human being 
So that's that's uh, that's how I would say it. Well, I, I agree with what you're saying. I like the mission. Uh, I'm just trying to think, like if if you will listen to cybersecurity, I've had the the lecture. Um, they'll say, <coughs> do, not, do not make your Facebook pro public. It's just. It makes you a target. It's kind of the lecture which I get in the church saying that a devil is a really, you know, devil well, worshippers are this and that. Of course there are people who well do I mean weird things. Different missions, you know, like if what you're doing I think is working in a good thing. But at the moment because I'm already spun up with the family. Totally, totally fine. Stuff, Totally fine. You know, if every if I, you could maybe have two pa Facebook pages. I which Facebook doesn't possible. allow. They'll let you set up uh, a business yeah. page, but it doesn't. It's there is no interaction. I'm the oh, my whole thing that. is yeah. yeah. You can have like uh, his broadcast or his podcast, or you can actually have a page where you can go out and do a show right. and talk about it. You're still giving, and yeah. it will still spread. It will still grow phenomenally. Yeah. Um, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's all how you want to take something. I personally feel that you must become your persona you must become your mission you yourself should be your mission after all my journey this is what i learned that if you become your own like if you become the steve jobs of apple then things just working out differently you yeah. we don't know who is the ceo of sony most people don't and you know we don't have any attachment with sony and you know but we do have attachment with apple um, because of a person so that's what I believe. You know, it, it, you don't have to agree with it. That's what my experience has taught me, and everybody has a different experience. Um, you should, you could definitely have two accounts to to play around with it. Security, yes, you should definitely add your phone number to your Facebook so they can SMS you uh, your your code. You cannot be hacked into it. There are some measures which I mentioned in the book. We should definitely take, which no most people don't. Most people add their pet's name or or you know simple password you know or or you know your name and your one two three four as password but that's not secure um, um, you know if, if you are if you have something to to um, to protect then you should protect learn to protect it and if you just spend like an hour on YouTube you can learn so much on how to secure yourself on cyber security of course somebody can still be hacked but in generally you cannot there's so much enforcement i think my facebook is less hackable than my bank account mm -hmm. seriously because there's they have so much more security than my my bank of america account i personally think so i, I exactly i still do too this is not an advertisement for bank of america it is not but that's how it is the technology they use is so obsolete compared to facebook i was just reflecting and thinking that you could probably apply the same concept just now on facebook so for people who do want to feel like their facebook you can do Twitter. You can do LinkedIn today. Link LinkedIn is when I started it. There was no video on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Now I come from a country where 70% cannot read and write their name. So I wanted to use more and more video. I'm a I'm not an academia person. I never went to college. I hate books, re reading books at least. Uh, I listen to them now. My first book ever was like six, seven years ago, and I listened to it. I never had any books before that. It's, it's stupid of me, I'm sorry, but it's, it's how I was. And most people, again, in my part of the world, don't listen to books or read books. Um, so uh, the world is very different in you know, different parts of the world. But today, I think LinkedIn can be used for similar purpose because they have enriched it with video, pictures. If you could, uh, Twitter has the same live feed. The world is changing very fast. We don't know if this... For me, this is again a tool. Five years from now, two years from now, Facebook might be changed by something else. It can happen because I, I've been doing this before Facebook, but with Facebook, it just allowed me to do it much gigantically, very quickly, very, very quickly. Everybody I have, uh, I have who has kind of embraced my plat ways of doing it, they have grown it exponentially. Uh, there's another guy who is uh, working in Pakistan. His platform is called Jumpstart Pakistan. He's been doing for five years uh, entrepreneurship courses, like Start a Weekend. And he joined doing videos with me only a year ago, and he has exponential following within a year's time because he's focused on entrepreneurship, and he's only, you know, I'm giving him the right people. He goes interview them, he goes interview them, and all of a sudden their networks multiply. 
because video and Facebook just, you know, it's just very crazy how you use it. You had a question? Yes. yes. I do have a question. And um, so, because you have so many friends <coughs> or, or you say followers on your Facebook, are they all able to message you? And if you get a lot of messages, how do you spend your time and energy? Yes. Because I've run into problems where I've been burned out so many times. So, you know, over the past years, I've stopped adding people that have fewer than, say, 20 mutual friends. Right. Um, so, yes, I get a lot of messages every single day. I wake up with like, I don't know how many, I don't count. I, my arm has been sick for a month now because I'm like this all the time. Uh, and I still get complaints. You sir, you don't answer my question. I'm like, dude, there's a block button. I block them. You can now go and ask on my wall. If they're really uh, clinging on me, I just... You, 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 I have created processes. So you can on your iPhones and your Android create macros. Um, I was just with um, another friend who created the MIT entrepreneurship program and she had the same question which you asked and I showed her how you can use the text replacement function in Apple. So for example, if somebody just sends me a hello, I would go back and write three characters and it'll send me them a whole paragraph of instructions <laughs> to follow. So, but so it takes me like four seconds, but still, still takes four seconds to answer them. Uh, it wouldn't like I don't have to type it down, spend two, three minutes. And I learned it back in the day when I was doing custom. I mean, there was a company I used to do customer service for, 1997, uh, and I got three of their guys fired because I could alone handle all their emails because I created macros in my in my email software. And I could just tick, 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 done. Reply when sent. You know, book would go, and just just set macros. It sounds like you almost have a bot version of yourself. Uh, I I I would I'm actually working on it. Yeah. I would love to have a bot version. I'm I actually I'm looking for somebody who can help me design an AI to assist me. Hello, uh, you know, like Jarvis, do this, and Jarvis, uh, like an Alexa. Uh, it is getting there, but it's. I wanted more. Like I wanted to know Eric and assign Eric and follow up for me, and you know get things done for him because I have. I would. I love to do a lot of things, and I can't because of my bandwidth doing things. So I want like a Jarvis or like an Alexa to actually go out and manage things because I. I. I, I do so many things I forget, and then, you know, like uh, we were just think talking about with Erica yesterday of starting a new business, and I was like. If I had Jarvis, it could just follow up, and most of my most of the things fall apart because of the bad follow up in my world. Mm -hmm. uh, if we can just automate that somehow, it'll just I can grow exponentially even more. But uh, if you learn, I can show you how to do macros on Apple. It's really easy, and uh, you just do like text replacement. Uh, you just type one or two characters, whatever you want to set up. So if somebody says me hello, I send them a, an X message. If somebody says I'm a fan, I send them another message. If somebody says I need money, I send them another message. I have to read <laughs> them. So, but then I don't want to be mean to them by like. Yeah, but you have you can customize it, and also you can install a chat box like ManyChat on your Facebook, uh, which will filter out the messages for you. It's free. Uh, it will take over your Facebook account, and then everybody who gets a message, they it'll it'll come to you, but it's like filtered. It'll force them to say what you, they want, what the they, they want from you. They want to go out with you, whatever they want, whatever they want from you. You can kind of, I don't know what kind of messages you get, but automation has definitely uh, helped me a lot, and I, I could definitely use more. Could you talk a little more about Facebook Zero? I, saw, I just looked at it, it said it's text only, is that true? Uh, the fake the zero version yes uh -huh. the zero version was pitched by Facebook to telecom companies that if somebody started using Facebook uh, compared to somebody not using Facebook they have more chances to sell data for videos and pictures to them that's, that's, that's their charge, but the, text is not. the text is totally free mm -hmm. and pictures is now free also in some countries Sometimes. and videos they charge so uh, if, if you get somebody excited in a conversation, they get a video, they will watch it and they'll pay for it. So if that's their pitch of selling to those, you know, why would they, why would, the telco pays the bill. Facebook doesn't pay anything. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. For millions and millions of people who are. Yeah. Not, it's really, money. really powerful and I think it is helping a lot of people. Sure. Even though the governments don't realize it or support it, it's, it's. It's like creating a parallel world. Even F SMS you have to pay for. It. Uh, yeah, WhatsApp, they have also done it with WhatsApp for free. 
by free, the way. Free data? Free, without free, well, without data. Facebook. It is owned by Facebook. But not free data. You don't need data. They, they, they do WhatsApp for free in certain packages for like 10 cents a month or something. Mm -hmm. uh, or totally free even sometimes. Depends on the carrier in the country. Yeah. Be, you know, they, they kind of uh, tweaked it into it. Has Facebook talked to you, the company? Uh, about this? No. No, no. Generally? No, no. no. They've never engaged you? No. I've tried many times, but I haven't been able to. Okay. Yeah, I have an office upstairs. Yeah, I didn't know that, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Introduce me. I actually uh, asked um, uh, him um, if he knew somebody. He said, I know, but they're not anybody who would be interested in this kind of stuff. Um, I think I market Facebook more than any Facebook employee does. Um, <laughs> uh, even in my own country, I know in other places, uh, I haven't met anyone in my life who talks so much about Facebook. because I, th I really love it in terms that... It the potential it has to help people. Um, the way I use it, it it's uh, totally different than anybody else I know of. And then there are a lot of people now using it for, for similar purposes, though. How do, you, how do you keep people from hurting themselves with it? Because that happens, too. It's a double-edged sword. I, I like what? Like getting going and killing themselves? Well, let's say saying in a popular political opinion. Popular. You, the only way... I have six kids. The only way you teach them is by letting them make mistakes. Uh, I, have, I don't know any other way to teach them. I don't know of it. So if you know a better way, please do coach me. Well, that, that you tell your kids anything you put online, you must expect the whole principle. Yeah, because it's, it's the world has totally changed. It's, it is transparent. No matter how much you think it is private, it's no longer private. I was sitting with the Minister of Interior Depart you know, in, in, of Pakistan once and he said, if you have taken a picture on your phone, just forget it that it's, there, is, <laughs> there, is, there is such a thing called privacy. And the, he's a, he, this, it was his job to understand how things work. He was the, in charge of all security of the country uh, and, and I agree with him. This is five years ago. Uh, for, you know, now it's just, it just, uh, just don't do it. Just become a better human being. <laughs> but then you can also don't think wrongly, right? You can get scared. Well, thinking is about there. 10 years, 15 years maximum. You plant a chip and thinking <laughs> is gone too. <laughs> I, I personally feel that uh, it's happening. I, I, I'm very, very sure. My intuition says it's going to be happening. It's, uh, it's, it's a very weirdly scary world coming in. I mean, just think of Alexa three years ago. Nobody had it. You know, just think of how amazing it is. If, I don't know if you're using it, but it's just phenomenal. Uh, I got one so that my kids can have a better English American accent uh, <laughs> because it doesn't understand if you speak with an Indian accent or something. <laughs> so you have to kind of fix your accent. So I got it for that purpose. But now my, all my kids have one in every room. It's an intercom. We you know page each, page each other. The information is there all the time. So the whole learning process changes because you can ask anything anytime you want uh, so without even touching Google you know you can just say so Alexa you know what's my dad talking about and it's <laughs> kind of you know it will explain what's going on right does it help yeah can we help you build your b podcast I mean it's an interesting approach um, I've so I started working in social media in like 2010 and that was kind of, that was pre-Facebook realizing they could charge everybody for everything. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot easier to build kind of a natural audience with just, <coughs> with nothing. Like I built, built an audience for a state, for the Rhode Island House of Representatives with really no effort because I didn't have to charge to get those views in front of people. I mean, am I personally comfortable putting my personal Facebook out there? Just because, you know, I'm coming from Rhode Island. Rhode Island is about the size of a thumbtack and six degrees of separation or two. So I don't, so like, I like to separate those two worlds out. So, um, so I'm just trying to run through my head of like, all right, how can I apply a similar methodology to our page or to our group? that we've set up to continue engaging people, but without having them cross so much into people's personal lives. Mm. 
Where are you from originally? Oh, I was born in Mauritania. Mauritania. Um, so I was in a Ju Muslim Jewish conference. My roommate was from his, one was from Israel, one was from Jerusalem, uh, from Palestine. And again, I was talking about the same thing, right? Uh, like I do all the time. And I said, well, I want open your follower function so people can actually follow you. You know, I said, why? I said, because I want 100,000 people to follow you. So why? I said, because you are, you're shouting every day that nobody's hearing your voice. And there's a tool right in front of you, which you can just use to talk about what you want to talk about. And like everybody's kind of waiting for their three minutes on CNN. You know, if, 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 if CNN comes and asks you what you want, you will give them three minutes. But why don't you give their three minutes to your Facebook or your LinkedIn? You should, because eventually you will get on CNN for doing what you do on your Facebook. Because news makes news, makes news, makes news. If you don't make any noise, CNN is not going to call you because there's so much going on in the world. There's only 24 hours they can do coverage of and there's so many people. So whatever your mission is, I'm not saying you should use it, but as an entrepreneur, I can teach you one thing or, or share one thing is the best people who would actually, it's like you open a coffee shop. The first, well, first day, who's going to be in your coffee shop? Not the customer, right? Mm -hmm. You want to invite all your family, your friends, because they will get the word out, because they have some association with you. They have some intimacy with you. They have some friendship with you. So if you go out and use your personal account, your old, old network of school friends, of your family, they will go out and take your mission further. And they have to be on board. It's the most, the hardest crowd to sell. I know that for sure. Well, I mean, to be frank, uh, there's like over like having been on Facebook when it was a you need a, co a, a dot yeah. you address to get in yeah you had to be a student over <coughs> those saying those that feeling of connecting with old middle school friends you, two or three years in you're like I remember why I stopped talking yeah. <laughs> and you slowly start. Oh, jeez. Well, there's always unfriend button, buddy. <laughs> you can always unfriend them. <laughs> get them out of your life. You know, if they're bothering you so much, get them out of your life. But yeah. would you recommend, like, targeting, like, seeing who else on Facebook is interested in a yes. topic? And just of course. But the first, you know, the first person you want to sell to is the people you can easily sell or for free to that's my that's my take if 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 they believe the people who actually believe in you will start believing in your mission uh, to build a relationship with a stranger takes time you just met me you don't know me it's going to take time to even digest what I just said because you don't have a context behind me even though I'm telling a story it will take time to build that trust and that trust is what actually does everything you know we all do things based on our trust right uh, so take advantage of the network which trusts you already even if they are not you don't they don't like you they don't have to but they know you uh, but so they will help you more than a stranger would that's what I'm saying can you talk more about the follow function and what's Facebook friend versus Facebook follow sure beautiful question separate that or you make a new identity for this or so not so so a few years ago, Facebook started giving a function on Facebook. Up, uh, the limit was 5,000 people, right? You cannot add more than 5,000 people on Facebook as friend. a friend, friend, right? So they started a thing called a page. If you need more than 5,000 people, you go out and make a page. Mm -hmm. Then somebody smart in there said, you know what? We will allow a function called subscriber on Facebook if it's 5,000 and one person coming to you. As, as your own personality or a page? As your own personality. Now it's called a follow function, just like on a Twitter. Just like you were saying, you had like four Twitter followers. And Come on, 31. Oh, 31. So <laughs> sorry. Uh, made by the now, it's like 100. <laughs> so, um, so now they have this function called follower function. And you most people have it turned off. And all it does is it allows people to subscribe to your public news feed. So if you post something on Facebook, say your, your son or your daughter's photo, and you say it's for friends only, mm -hmm. the follower cannot see it. If you post something, I got this amazing new cafeteria started, and you post it as public, uh, your follower can see it. And he gets it in his news feed. That's all it is. All Facebook users have that? All, everyone has it, except the people who are under 18. 
uh, everybody has it yeah, thank you uh, and you should turn it on so that if you get a friend request if you're a cute girl you're gonna get a lot of friend requests so mm -hmm. you just decline it and they become your follower so they become just your market they become your the people who are so consuming your content if I decline, so they I become I your follower they become follow if your follower function is on if the follower function yes I'll, I'll check it out for you. Because I'm deliberately actually now, up. So yes. Like so, so you can only stack a thousand people. After a yes. thousand people, it even you can't even stack. You can't even receive any friend request anymore. That's what I was trying to keep it at. Yeah. It's but now it's called public post. It's now even changed the name again, and it's called a public post. So who can subscribe to your public post? You can say everyone. So you have eight hundred thousand Facebook followers, not eight hundred thousand Facebook friends. I have. You cannot have more than five thousand Facebook friends. I can only have 5,000 Facebook friends, so every single day, I wish them happy birthday, and if they haven't talked with me for uh, some time, I say goodbye, and I unfriend them, and I wait for the new person to you come into my network. Your your yeah. So it's, it's becoming more and more quality is becoming higher and higher because I'm filtering the process, right? Yeah. Yes. You mentioned something about a few pennies for a, a like in Africa. Right. I didn't quite understand what it was you were talking about. Like sure. <coughs> what did you mean by that? Sure. Let me let me let's see what Prince has to say. Oh, hey, good Prince. Good to, hey, good to see Thank you, you for coming, buddy. No, thank you for inviting me. Uh, well, I want to talk about you know the big elephant in the room, uh, which is the Cambridge Analytica. And oh, <laughs> I'm gonna say that um, my biggest concern after the revelations in regards to what happened is privacy. Uh, I just want to know, and from your take, why should people still use Facebook? <coughs> okay, um, it's very different. Um, I think um, privacy doesn't exist. I've said it multiple times. It, I don't believe that it exists. No matter what somebody says to you, mm. uh, your data is gone. It's I, I believe that. Uh, so it's it's a different topic. We can actually okay. talk along about it. Sure. Um, your question is um, so in Facebook. If you have a public page or a company page, you can pay Facebook and say. Uh, I want to show my product, my page, or my video, or my status to X and X people. It could be, you can target a country, you can target a city, you can co target like uh, oh, anything. Yeah. Uh, you can say, I want to meet people who are uh, 50 to 65 years of age, who, ha who speak Arabic or not speak Arabic, who belong from this country, and they will show that ad to that country only and based on that based on the demand and supply uh, they have a rate a price so if you're going to sub say show an ad to Cambridge student people living in Cambridge who are from so such and such demography they will charge probably 50 cents to a dollar per like why is it, in other words if they don't like it when they see it there's no uh, charge well to there is no charge to you, okay. but they will not show your ad as much b if they're not getting likes because they're here to make money. Yeah. So, uh, but if you got, if, if you showed that, say, in Botswana, chances are more people will see it, uh, your ad, because not many people are advertising in Botswana yet. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Alrighty, thank you everyone. And as for uh, Cambridge Analytics, I think what Cambridge Analytics did was everything which was public data, we already gave it to Facebook as public. Yes. It went to Cambridge Analytics. Oh. And then they used it in a certain way, which anybody else even today can do it. So instead of scrapping data, do you understand what scrapping data means? Scraping. Yeah. Uh, no. My X and my. So okay. scraping data means that it the, a bot a write a software which goes out and reads everything for you mm -hmm. and s takes data from the internet which is public internet um, like google does it yeah. it goes and crawls all the website and brings data back into their own database so that's called data scrapping or sc how do you say scraping. it scraping, scraping. Mm -hmm. so that's called data scraping and that's what uh, happens so even today anybody can do it oh, wow. now Facebook might have some software installed to monitor that there's a now that there's a scraper coming in uh, and trying to steal data. Uh, so they might stop it or might not. Okay. Uh, so all Cambridge Analytics did was they took the data with permission and they just gave it to them 
and then they used it to analyze it and and you know like I read an article four years ago that ca that Facebook can tell who are you going to be in relationship with four years from now. Mm -hmm. I have a friend who got a green card in a week's time by the state of North Carolina because he gave a presentation that after 18 years, how many girls are going to be born and who are they going to likely marry? This guy uh, works for, uh, now gives data to all the uh, top companies, what kind of stuff you should keep in your store, what will sell six months from now, based on the past uh, patterns of data. Where is he from? Uh, he's from Pakistan, his name is Zishan. So he, that's his business, that's his job, that's the kind of manipulation that can be done to us based on the data which is already out there. Mm -hmm. So it's a very different, uh, it all depends on how you use your data. Most people don't understand this, so they don't really use it. Some smart kid or guy can use it to do weird stuff, uh, which when it comes out initially sounds weird, but then we all, all become used to it. Um, Thank you. Yeah. That's, that's my, based on being in the tech forever, uh, that's what I think it's going to be. And, and I think it's definitely growing exponentially, even if you think it's not happening tomorrow. Thank you so much, sir. Yes, thank yeah. you. Uh, it's going to, for sure, uh, be a different world in a few years' time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you for coming up. My pleasure. Did you Facebook Live that whole thing? 